Hi there, and um, welcome to this heat point instructional video where I'm going to go through a complete project from start to finish. Here um, I'm on the home page of heat point, so once you've managed to log in and create your account, um, this is the page that you should see. So you have a menu here for your previous projects that are all saved, and a button here to do new projects. So I'm going to start a new project here. You can change the project name at the top. and enter in customer details in this section as well as the address of the property. There's a couple of ways to do the address. Either you can zoom in and locate a property and set the address on the map. Otherwise, you can just enter in a postcode like so and then set from address. And when you do this, you can just find the correct property that you want to work on Click set from map and it will populate the address there. Um, there is one other thing that needs to be selected here, which is the build date. So there is a drop down to choose between pre 2000, post 2000, and post 2006. Um, and this will determine the ventilation rates and air changes for the rooms based uh, from the Civic Domestic Heating Guide. Um, so once you've confirmed all those details, you just click go. This will then take you into um, the first set part of the heat point, which is a material selection. So for each type of material, they'll ask you to choose which one you have in the property. So for the exterior wall types, the U value is shown in the top corner, the thickness of the, the material, and then a composition. So you just select the ones that you have um, in the property, as many or as few as you need. There are further menus here where when you click onto these, these take you into um, more choices um, which are fairly extensive and hopefully you should be able to find all of the types that you need so there's you know solid walls cavity um, externally rendered and clad and then they are subdivided into further categories um, there is a custom material button down here if you're unable to find the one that you need you can enter U values there or use the tool within that um, to build up the layers so I'm just gonna go through I've got internal wall sections um, to choose that, whatever floor type you have, if it's solid and insulated, whether it's suspended, you just select what you have in the property. When I'm selecting materials, um, the first one will get this little blue star, which means that that's the default material. Um, so when you start building, it's automatically going to use this, but you can change that to whichever one you want. <clears throat> and then for the roof types, I'll just select a couple there, and then you have windows again each time you can click custom materials if you need to so double, double glazing um, double glaze PVC and then roof glazing if you have Valex windows um, it will require you to select a material here but if you don't have um, any roof glazing in the property even if you select one it won't it won't make you use it and it won't show up in the report so it's just to be part of your material library so that it's there in case you need it um, and similarly for the radiators, I tend to just put all the radiator types in there in so that you have them accessible later on in the software. If you need your own radiator types, you can select them from here. Otherwise, these are based on stale rads, the one in here. So now I just click done and I'm into the design phase for the software. So it's going to ask me to set the ceiling height for this. So if I just confirm that and you can rename the ground floor or, re or change to the default ceiling height. And now I'm in the, the build mode for the tool. So essentially from here on the left hand side you can drag and drop in rooms. So if you click on the corner point it will show you the, the lengths, the dimensions for the associated walls. Click on the dimensions for those walls and then change them to a specific value. So you need to be really precise. You can do it like that. Otherwise, you can just drag and drop these wherever you need. Um, you also have the function if you click on these, you can change what they do. You can make an angled wall essentially using this. So I'm going to create a small little house just as a rough guide. Um, here, essentially, if you click in the middle of the room, it will ask you to select the, the room type. So I'm going to do a hallway here. Um, you can click on any individual wall to change the material types and go back into the menu if you forgot any and then rooms just snap together like so 
um, and you'll see when it's snapped together properly, you'll get this inter. This will automatically register that its internal walls and be you know the same thickness all the way along. I can then just resize these as I need. Select, um, yeah, select the room type. So I'm going to go um, a living room potentially, which is there. Um, I can then build essentially. If you want to build round corners, you can drag and drop to create additional handles. At the moment, if I drag this handle, it wants to resize everything. But if I click on that, I can change what it does and just drag around the corner. Um, I could do potentially a little storeroom there. And then quickly, as you can see, I can just create these small rooms. So now that I've dropped in all of these rooms, I'll just go through. This is just going to be um, a little tiny study. I've got a little storeroom here. And then this can be um, living room or no, let's do a lounge here. And then it's that the kitchen over here. So obviously all of these room types that are in here have predetermined um, design temperatures and infiltration rates. So I'll just make sure that's all snapped. Um, on the left hand side is where you can add in doorways. So they just snap onto the inside edge. Um, you can change the material here or the size of that doorway. Uh, I'm going to be a bit on back door and for the kitchen as well. Uh, windows get dragged and dropped into the wall area. And again, you just click this button to change the material and this one to resize. I can just put a few around the property. If you have um, a party wall that you need to select, when you click on the wall, it's going to ask what's on the other side of that wall. Um, so this is this external stereo, leave that as outside, but you can change that um, to an unheated or heated space if you know um, if it's a party wall or there's a garage or you know what's on the other side. Um, radiators, you just drag and drop into the rooms. So you can select the type here and resize there. And essentially, you will just go around and drag and drop them in. This is from a surveying point of view, so you're just specifying what is pre-existing within this property. If there aren't any radiators in the property already, then you can just leave it without them. You can then, in this over here is a little navigator for you to find your way around um, the plan. So essentially, we're working, this, this is highlighted on the ground floor, but if you go into floors, you can then change the sections there. So if you have different floor types, you just drag and drop a region. Um, if it's all the same type, you can just leave it as a default, but you might have um, an area which is not, that has been upgraded and has insulation, and you can just select that area and just few as many as you need. I'll then add in a first floor to this. I'm going to leave that there and you have an outline of the ground floor that you first drew so you can just work on top of that so if I just put in a landing above the hallway <clears throat> and then do a little bathroom and a couple of bedrooms up here So this is a bedroom and then another bedroom. You could, from the custom room, just rename these bedrooms if you want. Um, and obviously the air changes and temperature are set there, but you, you do have the ability to change them should you need. I'll then put in a couple of windows. Another window here, and the radiators will just snap into the correct place. 
if you do drop one and it's not slapped correctly, you'll get a warning message up here. And so you can either just delete or um, snap them into the correct place. There we go. Then there is the ceiling section here. If you have the same ceiling type, then you can leave it the same, um, which at the moment, this is presetting to pitch, which I'm going to leave is totally fine. But you do have roof lights and dormers in this section. Um, here is showing you the floors and ceilings. So for example, in this area, it knows we're between the first and ground floor. So it's going to automatically select um, intermediate floors and it's selecting defaulted to 100 mil insulation, but I'm just going to change that to having no insulation. And this area here will just be staying with insulation. If I put it over here, this is, it knows that there, this is above the ground floor, but there's no room above it. So it is specifying a roof type. And I'm just going to say this is a flat roofed extension and it's outside above it. So that is fine. I'm pretty happy with the building that I've put together. So from here, I can just go to heat pump selection. So the first thing it's going to ask is the sound check. So if that's a win neighbor's, neighbor's window or door, and then the number of reflective surfaces for the heat pump is it's on the ground and against the property that you're, you're installing it in, then that would be two. And obviously if it's in the corner with a few walls, two walls and, and the floor, and then that's three surfaces, or if it's just out in the garden on the ground, that would be one. And then whether there's a barrier, um, if it's around the corner from where that neighbor is, then that would be a full barrier. Um, and you just specify that. The distance from where the proposed location of the heat pump to that neighbor's window or door. Once I confirm that, it's gonna recommend based on the heat loss um, a heat pump. So from this, it's saying around a five kilowatt. Um, so either you can go through the menus of the other heat pumps that are supplied by Midsummer, and then you can just choose the right one. So I'm gonna put this um, five kilowatt stamps in. So initially it's gonna show you just an overview of the survey property. So the square meterage of the room, um, its overall heat loss and its design temperature, and then the size of the surveyed radiators. From here, I can then add in an option and that's gonna put in the heat pump that I've created. So from this, essentially, this here is giving the overall heat loss of the property. Um, that's the out door design temperature, and then I can change the flow temperature. So as I change the flow temperature, the output of the heat pump will change as well. So if I put it up to 55 in this case, it's still gonna be just um, enough for the heat loss. If I drop it right down, then we have a little bit of um, breathing room there. So from this, obviously you're gonna see the scops of the unit as well as the, I put the temperature down, that's obviously gonna increase. Um, so you can, balance that out and then on the right hand side is the heat emitters so as I increase the heat the flow temperature you'll see the output of those radiators increasing so I can check these radiators are actually from most of these rooms at 48 degrees are going to be sufficient if I run that a bit hotter this room is still has a shortfall so you could check whether the existing radiators are going to be fine or whether they're going to need some upgrades. So ideally, you're going to want to be running this as cool as possible to try and get um, better scops. Um, so around 45 seems to be good for this particular unit. So that means that here I've got a bit of a shortfall. So I can either just delete one of these heat emitters It'll still show up in the report as a surveyed one, but I can replace it then with another um, radiator. So even just a small K2 in this case is gonna to be totally fine. Um, and then on the right here is the, so this is the overall room demand. The orange line is what that existing radiator is doing. And then this dotted line is what the proposed one that you're thinking of installing is gonna do, so an 800 by 600 in this case would be totally fine. Um, this one has a shortfall, so I'm probably just gonna change that and swap that out for a K2. So 
So you can go through the entire property um, and select the different radiators to upgrade. You can also in this section select underfloor heating. Um, and it will give you the watts per square meter that you need for that. And in this bedroom, I'm just gonna put it in. Another radiator. So now I can see that I have now meet, met the, the heat requirements for each room with those heat emitters. Um, I have the option up here of, I'm gonna call this Samsung. Of either I can just duplicate this option to keep all of the changes that I made and then I could try a different heat pump um, maybe a valent um, which at cool temperatures would just about do it um, so you could change it at the heat pump or you could just click a new option and start again from scratch and try a different combination of heat emitters if you just want to do an example where you just have underfloor heating um, or if you do partially rads and underfloor heating you can compare the two and check the size that you need. Once you have um, gone through and sorted out and you're happy with the sizing and the heat pump and the upgrades of the radiators that you want to do you just click the option that you're happy with there in the report and click next button. Um, there is then this performance task that still to be completed so enter the EPC number of the property there and then from the EPC website it should give you the energy requirements for heat um, for heat in the property and for hot water and then you can just click the MCS number of the heat pump that you're proposing to use and then a cylinder size for that property and it will then just ask you about the existing gas system, so it might be around 75% efficient, uh, depending on what they've got installed and, <clears throat> and the age of the system. Um, and then this will give you a performance estimate based on that EPC data. So if this is the total energy requirement from the property, and that is what the existing gas system would use in kilowatt hours of gas to produce that kilowatt hours of heat output and this is what a heat pump would use of kilowatt hours of electricity to produce the same amount of heat so you can see they're vastly superior on the efficiencies um, this will then give you this overall heat pump report so the name of the property property details are included in this a survey with the layout and all the materials you used and then a bit more in depth here room by room that gives you design temperature the heat loss the area of that room and what the room is and um, information on if it's a surveyed rate or data what its outputs of the flow temperature would be um, and you can see it quite easily meeting the heat loss there in this case I removed one radiator so you can quickly check the two you know the additional upgrades what the difference is and how that's meeting the heat loss um, for each room so this should be laid out quite easily for anybody to sort of understand what changes you're making and why you're doing them um, this will then also include information on the heat pump itself to check that the sizing is sufficient and the sound check from the MCS sound check is in here and the performance estimate that's also following the MCS guidelines so that is pretty much an overview. There are a couple of forms in here. Um, this one is the MCS compliance certificate that requires you just to confirm a few of these boxes and you can generate the certificate here. And then you have DNL commissioning form, which again will pre-populate a lot of the information in the form section. And then you can generate the PDF, which will be available in the reports once completed and you can download everything from there. Um, so that is pretty much a run through of everything. If there are any other bits that you're unsure of after this, then you can just send us an email via the contact us section or give us a call here. Um, otherwise, there is a booking training section here if you want to do a full um, training session where you can ask your own questions. So thank you very much.